Hello and welcome back to another Six Sages Gaming Duel Series. Today we have for you a match between the Final Fantasy IX Tempo deck that we had posted and two different decks actually. We tried to record the matches from the Zeej Games event um, and the second game of this match went on to about 35 minutes to two cards left in the deck so it's not all that exciting to watch. And then the camera died during the finals so we're going to just showcase a best of one for both of them. So starting off with the player on the right with Final Fantasy IX, starting off with two backups, which is always a great place to start with that deck, um, just naturally for how much you draw into it. Uh, I never never felt bad about starting with two backups on turn one. And then our opponent is just playing a Tama to start. So very quickly here, we're pushing to three backups, and from this point on, we really just need a water backup to seal the deal, uh, but we can at this point just play some forwards, have the backups to support selfie every turn, and just punch with a 9k or higher every single turn. And also we do apologize for the camera angle again where Siege just moved into their new shop while well, this was the second week, uh, so we are still trying to figure out what would be best for recording and whatnot, so we'll hopefully be improving that in the weeks to come. Um, and we're supposed to be adding streaming sooner or later, so hopefully that will be uh, next up. Paying three, playing a lot and passing. Again, thankfully not burning any cards from our hand. So this is where we really just start to be very efficient with our backups and just goes to show how important playing those backups early can be and how far ahead they're going to get us in this match. Then our opponent plays a guy and passes. Lucky for us, we don't have to really worry about it. We can just get in a free point of damage here. Now, unfortunately for us, he hits the Leviathan EX first, so Lon is going to go back to our hand. Uh, but we have all of these wonderful cards in our hand that we can just replay it and not really uh, feel that terrible for it. So we're just going to discard some cards to play out our hand again. Discarding Mog is part of the cost for land, so we don't really have a lot of water. We're, uh, we're effectively a mono red deck, it certainly feels like right now. And then we're playing the Warrior of Light, because if he chooses to block, it's going to kill his guy. Again, yeah, we've invested significantly less resources at this point, uh, so trading up would be a huge, huge favor for us. They play the Geomancer backup, which has been quite a debated topic. If you're running something like 20 EX Burst, you know, there might be uh, some tricks that you can do with it, but uh, Richard Zapp did a very nice, uh, lengthy write-up on why you need to really have a saturated EX Burst deck to maybe get value out of that card. So our opponent chooses not to block. Obviously don't want to lose, trade his guy for your light. Land, of course, still going uncontested here and we push our opponent to 3 damage. So we have a Titus to play, which is not all that great right now. Um, seeing both of them early hurts quite a bit, uh, but also with the understanding that we're gonna hopefully just win this game out from this point, so we're never gonna win through Blitz Haze, but it would be nice to have a 9k body on the board that can potentially hit for 11k in case our opponent has uh, some kind of battle trick up his sleeve. Well, actually 12k with Summoner, to be technically correct. So here we're just going to play the Red Mage and Pass with the hopes that, again, building up our backups, we have Summoner to break it if we really have to, and now we have the option to make one of his forwards unable to block and give one of our other guys plus uh, plus 2,000 on attack. So he's going to pay 3, play the Minmu, uh, card that's not doing much for him currently, but can certainly be helpful. Again, our our deck capitalizes on just doing big sums of damage when we want to hit, so the reduction effect of Minwoo isn't going to hurt us all that much. And then playing a Vincent just to get another body on the board. So 
So point out right there is a great draw because this entire game we've just had a stacked hand, so it's a uh, effectively 12k body on attack when we draw for our turn and then not attack with anything or play anything else out of our hand. Uh, that I've been finding is just enough to be able to push through for damage. Now again, we see a lot of mid-range kind of these slower decks locally, so I built the deck with that in mind. Going forward, based on your locals, depending on what you're seeing, you're probably going to want to use a more Tifa type of mid-range uh, deck that would remove some of those cards. So here we're just going to Bahamut to get rid of his two guys, use Warrior Light and get him a couple points of damage. Um, conversely, I could have just saved it here, force the Red Mage, force a selfie activation, um, which would have had mostly the same result here of getting in two points of damage. Uh, but ultimately, him hitting the Ravon there makes us feel a lot better that we didn't uh, we didn't burn uh, or that we did burn the two fours when we did. And here our opponent discards two plus three backups to play Shantoto and clear the board. Uh, usually not the best spot to be in, but turns out we still have just a stacked hand uh, that we can very easily play a 9k, not lose a lot of resources, and present our opponent with another threat that he just must care about. And again, in a deck that wants to create card advantage and create uh, either fours that are difficult for your opponent to remove or uh, make them discard cards, draw extra cards, what have you, Rubicante fills a great role with his barrier shift. Um, and the fact, again, that he's a 9k by himself, so he's often attacking for just big enough anyways, can push him to 11 if absolutely needed. If they have, say, a Warrior, a Light, and Maria, which he was able to, to battle through, uh, barrier shift can absolutely be a key turn, turning point in the matchup for you if they try to play like a 7 cost Odin or, or what have you to kill it. Here our opponent plays Ash, really not all that threatening because again we have Red Mage so the game is um, pretty much over at this point unless he finds a way to outrace us but um, unless he's able to f uh, flood the field very quickly we should just win out be thanks to Red Mage. And this is a point where I take way too long to see that I just have it in my hand with Red Mage. Um, I was too focused on trying to play around uh, a selfie activation when I didn't need to. Um, we had the Blast in hand, so we really just needed to uh, discard Red Card, make Red Mage, force Ash to go blockable, play a card from our hand, and give it haste. Some of the other lines that we were thinking was to just play the Steiner and, and continue to play the value game that way, knowing that in two turns we should have it anyways. Um, but eventually we do figure it out that, um, again, unless he hits like an EX burst, uh, we should just have the win here. Then we have the Red Mage to make Ash unblockable, don't care how big it gets, and then Belias to give Amram haste. So he's going to Geomancer try to find a card on top. Unfortunately doesn't hit anything and then the last point will swing for a point of damage. So Red Mage really showing his stuff in this game and uh, again just how the deck can prey on some of these slower mid-range type of decks. Speaking on a deck that can be a bit slower to get started is the Wind Water Warrior of Light deck which we have featured here. Um, Scott was a newer player that was recently getting into the game so we had just used the list from Nationals so there is a bit of a learning curve with it. Um, I think he did fine certainly getting to the finals. This is the game one of the finals that he was able to get there so uh, it definitely did work for him and it has its benefits but we were able to test this matchup quite a bit 
Um, and it really just comes down to you having Bahamut and them not having Aerith, which is quite easy to play around unless you draw Bahamut late. And it's usually enough to get you the win. Uh, and again, I have to call out that Summoner is the MVP because otherwise you can't kill Warrior Alight, which can be a problem for this deck. Now, Archer is a relevant card here as well because it can kill our Red Rain, which, again, in this matchup is our best backup. So here we're going to see a Pain come down just to find a Riku. Um, 3,000 body isn't, again, really all that impressive. He can chump block with it and it allows him to find a, uh, a combo piece that lets him set up his board so he can hopefully play some free Pains later on. And while we haven't seen a lot of spoilers for Opus 3 yet, I would be very surprised if we don't uh, see the Yuna Riku pain combo popping up in even more decks. We did see a, recently a deck out of Japan that was uh, Wind Water with splashing the Final Fantasy IX package. So here we're playing Minwoo just to get another backup on the field, particularly a water based one. Um, and then Selfie, just because it's obviously one of the best backups for the deck. So here we mentioned playing a pain for, well, almost free if you would have had one more backup. Um, but just even being able to activate one backup sometimes can be a huge boost for you. So here we're going to see me attacking. He says he's going to block. I'm going to buff after the blocks to 9k, make our guy live, uh, and then we're going to have an eco to go find a Final Fantasy IX based forward. And pretty much every time that you are hitting the tutor, you are either going to grab uh, Zidane or Steiner. Usually my favorite play to do, and why I only run to Ico is to get a Steiner off the first one, use Steiner to find the second copy of the backup, discard it to pay for Zidane, uh, and then potentially make your opponent discard a card, or just draw a card and, and essentially play Zidane for free because you generated another card off of it. Uh, usually getting to play a backup and two forwards in turn can do wonders for you in getting ahead. And again, it really just helps set up the Bahamut plays that this deck wants to do. So our opponent has a Yuna, just slightly off camera, so he is online for Yuna and Riku, but again, ultimately this is where he's starting to get farther and farther behind where it's not going to be able to help him that much. So here's where I mentioned we're going to play the Steiner. We're going to find the second copy of the card that we don't care about, which is just great that it allows us to thin our deck uh, and you know make our drive draws that much more alive in following turns. Nothing feels worse than grabbing a backup off your draws and realizing that you can't actually play it. So to shortcut there, we discarded it for cost, and then we're going to play the Zidon and draw a card. Bit of a dead draw, but... Our opponent doesn't have a field. We have three attackers and a red mage ready to go on the following turn. So unless our opponent can generate two forwards on this turn, which the Wind Water Warrior Light deck certainly can pump out multiple uh, forwards in a turn just like this, uh, it's going to be a very short game. Again, pain not all that scary because we can just selfie the first one and then get in for two more points of damage. So here's where we mentioned that he has to play a couple of forwards, decides to play a Bart, activate all his wind characters, just to get more blockers out there. Um, and, and not to be missed either that it is a 9k body, so it can be difficult for some of our cards to deal with it. Speaking of being annoyed with drawing the doubles there, we have a selfie in our hand which does nothing in the land that's already in play. So they're great discard fodder here for our backup's effects, 
Uh, but outside of that, leaves a little bit to be desired. So here we're just going to force the uh, red mage so that if he wants to block, he has to do it in a, in a poor manner for him. Same parts can't pluck, and then we're going to get in a series of attacks. Here we're going to use the uh, Belias. He lets us draw a card, and um, if we're going to spend a card to you know, trade up or at least survive, might as well cycle off of it instead. It's the Penny X burst, gets a Riku, and then we're going to get in for the third point of damage. And here we get to draw a card since we have the duo of it. And now we're sitting in play with five backups. Card in our hand and Red Mage and Selfie on the field with even Mog. So we are in very, very good shape and very far ahead in this matchup. There's very few possible outs that he would have at this point. So here I'm just kind of uh, you know, signaling to my opponent that I have Mog, I'm going to bounce something, I have Red Mage, I'm going to have a red card in hand. You just have to assume that one of those two cards is a red card, so I'm going to be able to answer two of your guys on my turn. Again, that, that T is unfortunately not doing too much for us here. Would be a 10k attacker, which is nice, but um, in a deck that's so far ahead as it is, um, it probably gets, would get cut. I, when building the deck, I was between Waka and Titus uh, for them more or less wanting to do the same thing with being a very powerful 4-drop attacker, but um, looking back, I would change it to Waka now just because he can buff himself if needed, but also status reels uh, would be a very very powerful effect for this deck. So here we're going to see the red mage forcing a block. Here he's going to try to block with Waka, we just selfie instead and then get in for another point of damage. Um, again, we have no rush to play the Mog to, to bounce something, but um, this way we at least preserve our board presence, still have enough cards in hand, and have that mock ready to go. About the only thing that would be big here would be a Bell 4 on our turn during combat. Um, but I'm not convinced that would, even with him in the game, it would just kind of stall out the inevitable at this point because we do have five backups. So here we're just going to see a pass back to us. And here, what we basically have to do is make sure or play a bet around, does he have a Balthier to use the special, which negates one of my effects, or we have another Aerith for Planet Protector, which would also cancel one of my effects, and both of them are certainly reasonable things to have. But ultimately here we're just going to be able to push through for some points of damage, and be able to threaten again with the Red Mog, uh, Red Mage and Mog activations. And here we're really wishing we had another red card just so we could um, use both of our effects if needed, but turns out a bounce will do wonders for us as well. So here we're trying to play around if he has the planet protector or the other uh, other copy for an S effect. Uh, on either card, I guess, an S effect either way would be difficult for us. So 
gets bounced back to his hand, shows, proves to us that he doesn't have it, and then that way we can just red mage uh, the Barts. And that is going to be wrapping it up. So, sorry for the little bit different of a video this time this week, guys. I at least wanted to bring you some matches from uh, Zeej Games. So, sorry we couldn't get the second and third, uh, rather, second matches for either one of these, but we'll have more videos for you next week. So, have a good one. We'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming Dual Series. Have a good one. This video made possible by the patron support of viewers such as yourself. Thank you to our honorary sages.